Hello, everybody! It is Wednesday! How are we doing tonight? Welcome to the show on this Wednesday night. How was your Wednesday? It is hump day! We're getting over that hump this week. Yes, we are. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Great to have you with us. Hey, Adele and Dazzle. Great to have you ladies joining us. Hey, Zach. Saw you and let's call her Cheryl a little while ago selling stuff. Hey, from unsunny Florida on your beach vacation. Hey, Rick. I hope you and the family are still having a great time, regardless of the weather. Good to have you all here. What are y'all grateful for today? What, is, what are we grateful for? Happy hump day. Yes, it is. It is a good hump day. You know, we're getting to the other side of this week, week uh, 31 or 32, depending on how you're counting. We're getting there. We're on the downside now. Woo! We're up, down, yeah. We're on the tail end of this week now. You guys are. You are. You doing it, people. You're amazing. You're what keeps me going. Tell me what you're grateful for this Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening. What are we grateful for this Wednesday evening? Grateful that I was more eight than ish tonight. I am. I am, I am. Uh, that's great, Vicky. I'm, I'm, I, I am going to share that. I, I don't name names, but I am going to share that lesson. That is a lesson because there's, you're not alone. You just happen to be one that I have on speed dial. <laughs> And uh, so uh, I could hit you on speed dial and say, hey, you should have had a V8. Uh, but uh, it is an important lesson, and I will cover that later. Thank you. But I never name names when I talk about it. I, I mean, you're naming names. You called yourself out. But I will, uh, I will do it. Hey, Anita's with us tonight. Uh, Anita is with us. But it truly was great to talk with you, uh, Vicky. I really, uh, I really do enjoy that, and I'm glad you were able to take my call. I know it's not always easy. I know I don't always call at the most convenient time. But I had three things I had to accomplish before, I, uh, three calls I had to accomplish before I went live tonight, and you were one of them. So uh, it's my pleasure, I tell you. Absolutely my pleasure. I, I enjoyed... Uh, chatting with you. And, and what's more is I look forward to coming down to your area. I look forward to coming down to your area and and, uh, and being there uh, and seeing your store in person, being in your store in person. I, I, it's going to happen. I'm, we're going to travel again, people. We're going to get out there. I mean, uh, it's, it is going to happen. So I am excited about that. You're not alone running this store, Vicky. Hey, how many times do I have to say it? You, you, Vicky, you're not alone. <laughs> I got to remind everybody about it. You're not alone. I mean it. I walk the walk. You're not alone. I walk it with you. I am there on the path with you. I am absolutely positively there with you. So, uh, you know, I just want everybody to be sleep, sleep okay at night, you know? I don't, uh, I, I've seen those horror calls in the morning. I get those, I get those calls. So I get the calls when everything's wrong. So if, I, if we can stop something before everything's wrong, that's even better. So, yeah, we got a few lessons tonight uh, inspired by today's phone call. So that's great. Hey, Sheila's with us. Great to have you with us, Sheila. Glad to have you on tonight, on this hump day. It's great to have everybody here. It really is. 
I'm going to get going tonight because I want to keep this moving. I got a few things to cover tonight and I want to keep it going. And uh, I have this ambition in my head of finishing slightly early. <laughs> my peanut gallery laughed at that. My peanut gallery laughed at me. All right, folks, we start this program every night, every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start the program. Tonight, if you are following along in the book, we are on page 120. Ooh, this is a good one. Okay, throwback time. Good morning. The first school dance in the gym is hella scary, but good music is a playin'. And your friends are here, so F it, let's dance! All right, that is our good morning. Wait until you see the graphics on this one. I like the graphics on this page. Well, it is great to have you all here tonight. Like I've already said, we got a few uh, key topics to talk about tonight and uh, that I really want to hit on because they're important. I mean, they're just quite honestly important to cover. So first and foremost, I want to remind you about the uh, Grow Your Business with eBay Seller School. Uh, with virtual lesson videos and more to help you thrive online. And they have a guided course schedule that dropped today. You can sign up for it. It's all free. Um, it's, you know, yes, it's eBay geared, and eBay is a great platform to dip your toe into online selling. It's also a great place to get yourself customers and get people to know that you exist. Um, you know, everyone thinks they open up their website and they turn it on and the whole world will come knocking on their door, okay? Um, and people do come, but, but it's a small fraction of the potential millions and millions of people that are out there. So, dipping your toe with eBay, too, and gaining from some of their expertise is huge. And these educational uh, sessions are great. I posted it last night, uh, a link to it, in the NARTS private Facebook group. It went over to narts.org slash resalestrong, so it's all there. I just want to remind you about it so that you don't forget, uh, because it is such an important thing. Laurel, I was thinking of you. I was thinking of you today. I haven't talked to you and Jerry in forever, and uh, I, uh, I, uh, I've been thinking of you. I hope you are well, Laurel. I hope all is well with you, Ben, and the uh, stores, but... Uh, I do hope you are well. So what did I want to talk? What is topic number one? I'm gonna I'm gonna put Vicky's topic to number slot number two for uh, our uh, Wednesday uh, topic list, and I'm gonna start topic number one. Okay, is what do we do with um, the situation where an employee's um, well, it can be several things. And today's situation was an employee's child care giver has COVID or somebody in the child care organization does and the child care organization is temporarily shut down because of COVID. So your, your key staff member, your pricer, your manager, your, your right hand is no longer available to come to work. What do you do? Beyond covering the shifts and covering your store, what do you do from a payroll standpoint do you pay them do you let them apply for unemployment how do you handle the situation what is the best way to do it have you ever wondered and this could be even them themselves getting covid or uh, having somebody with them having covid hey ellen big highs to you and mike hope you are both well Hope all is well. I was thinking of you today. I got an email from, I mean, besides the fact that we texted, but I uh, got an email from uh, the, the Lexus dealership up the street from you that I bought a car at. Uh, telling me they want to sell me another one. Uh, so uh, I, I said, I know where that Lexus dealership is. It's right down from my friend Ellen. Um... So, you know, what do you do? Hey, Kitty, how are you? Good to have you here. Sorry I was on time tonight. 
So when you have an employee, and I'm going to use the example of their child care provider, is no longer able to provide child care because they came in contact with somebody with COVID. So their child doesn't have COVID, okay? They don't have COVID, but they have nobody to watch their child because their caregiver is isolating for two weeks. What do you do after you've covered the store? What do you do with this employee? Do you tell them to go on unemployment? So, so choice number one is unemployment. Choice number two is you pay them because you're a great person. Choice number three is uh, nothing. You do nothing. You don't pay them anything. You tell them when they come back to work, they get paid. What's the right answer with this one, guys? Any, any thoughts on it? Any strong feelings? If, if that happened in your store, if one of the people, if your manager or the person you just did a live video with tonight uh, um, couldn't come to work because the caregiver for their child, so not them, not their child, but the caregiver for their child isn't able to because they're self-quarantining because they might have come in contact with somebody or might even have the virus. What do you do? from a payroll standpoint. Hey, Pat in the Peanut Gallery, how are you? Yeah, Rose, good crowd tonight. See what happens when I'm on time? <laughs> when I'm on time, see what happens. You're all here. Uh, I'm gonna tell you. Rose, you're a good person. You'd probably pay them. That, that uh, it's, it, it, you know, it's not a personnel judgment, so you don't get to decide if they were a good employee in this conversation. But I get where you're going with it. Okay? I, I, I do get where you're going. Well, actually, you know, and this started with, uh, you know, with an unemployment claim. But actually, Congress thought of this. Believe it or not, Congress actually thought of this and helped us as small businesses. Okay. Uh, under the Family First Coronavirus Relief Act, and we haven't talked about this in a while, okay, through the end of the year, okay, for any number of reasons, they have COVID, somebody in their household has COVID, they need to isolate because of COVID, or even in the example I'm giving tonight, okay, the caregiver of their child is unavailable because of COVID, okay, you can pay them up to 80 hours, okay, 80 hours over two weeks, at two-thirds of their normal pay, or two-thirds of the minimum wage, whichever is higher. So two-thirds of their normal pay, or two-thirds of the minimum wage, whichever is higher. You can pay them that, through your normal payroll, okay? And on your quarterly taxes, there's now a new box to deduct that from your tax payment. And the government will actually let you deduct that from your tax payment. That whole amount, that whole two thirds, is, is, will get picked up for by the government, okay? So, you know, there's a few income restrictions. It can't, if it's child care related, it can't exceed $200 a day in payroll. So, you know, um, that, that is just one of the things for child care. But uh, the two-thirds can't exceed uh, $200. But um, the federal government will pick that up for up to 80 hours through the end of the year. So if you are in that situation... Um, and, and it's about keeping people off of unemployment. And it's about not being a burden to you, not being a burden to the states with the people coming on and off unemployment, on and off, on and off, on and off, collecting, okay? Um, but it's designed there through the end of the year, and I think it's got a decent chance of being extended. Um, Nebraska Angie. Um, I, you know... With that, it, it has a decent chance uh, of being extended should there be another bill that comes out of Congress, that provision, because they want to keep people off unemployment. And they want to keep people attached to your company. And ultimately, 
it creates, good, like what Rose was going to do and just pay them, it creates good morale. Okay, it creates good employee morale because they won't understand all the government side of it and that you'll eventually get some of this money back. Well, you'll eventually get all the money back. Okay, but they will understand that you took care of them. So that's why that is such an important feature, okay, to, to take into account um, with your um, uh, employees should this arise. Because you're having different situations. As this continue, as the pandemic con continues to drone on, we're running into these various situations. And this is a big one. Okay, so it covers them. Should they, um, if they are required to quarantine, okay, um, if they've been advised to self-quarantine, if they are experiencing COVID-19 symptoms and are waiting on a medical diagnosis, um, if they are caring for an individual that is subject to quarantine or has a diagnosis of COVID-19, um, is caring for a child whose place of care is closed for reasons related to COVID-19. So those are the key areas that are a part of that. And, your, um, and that is your federal government at work helping you support your team. So that is huge that you can get that two-thirds of money back. Okay, you can support your employee. And uh, that is good. Hey, Julie Jankowitz, how are you? Yeah, I was on, I was more eight than ish tonight. Pretty freaking amazing, especially the way this week has gone, even the way today has gone. Um, but uh, I am thrilled to be here at more eight than ish tonight, Julie. But I, I have screwed all sorts of people up with it. But I'm glad to have you here. So we were just talking about uh, employee compensation. Should they have a... Um, issue where an employee is out because uh, the example I used was their child care had to close because someone got COVID or someone was exposed to COVID and not that they have COVID or their child has COVID, but they know they've temporarily lost their child care and the government will pick up up to two thirds of their wages for up to 80 hours. No, it's good, Julie. I own it. I mean, I own this more ish than eight and eight than ish. I own it. I mean, I'm the king of 10 minutes late normally, but I really own, you know, especially this week being on central time. But, uh, well, you know, some of the stuff's going on in my world. Um, and it's been a it's been a week. It's been a week for my world, but that's OK. I still show up every night because life's about showing up. So that's a really cool thing and something that I really had to cover. Um, I like this quote. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist. That is all. That's why we need to get traveling. Again. Um, and while we're talking about employees for a second, I, w I do want to talk about... Uh, our friends at Kohl's are announcing a... Uh, uh, another round of pre-holiday bonuses. Again, trying to, this is again winners in this pandemic. The stores that are winners have been big about keeping uh, bonuses coming to keep their employees engaged. Um, they're giving it, Target is giving its 350,000 frontline employees another bonus. Just as the holiday shopping season kicks in, it'll give a $200 bonus to hourly workers in its stores and distribution centers, including new seasonal hires with the payout by early November. Hourly employees who work in Target's contact centers will also receive the bonus. Uh, it's an investment of more than $70 million, uh, and it's the fourth time that Target has recognized its frontline employees with bonuses in 2020, and is on top of several increases in its pay and benefits, including increasing its minimum wage to 15 um, Target said it spent nearly $1 billion this year on investments in its employees' well-being, health, and safety. Um, the CEO says, In a year like no other, I'm proud of what this team has accomplished and grateful for the care and connection they've provided our guests and communities. 
Target success this year is a direct result of not having to close, oh, excuse me, of our team members turning our purpose into action and meeting our guests, changing needs day after day. It is true. You know, that's what keeps it happening. That is what keeps it happening, people. Um, so the other lesson I have for you tonight. So my other big lesson of the night. Lessons of the night. Da, da, da. It is what the lesson that Vicky alluded to at the top of the program. And I normally don't name names, but Vicky named herself. So I, I am not kissing and telling. Vicky named herself. And um, what I want to talk about is artistic pieces. Artistic pieces, not art, okay, uh, but art like, okay. So think of a. You take your old Louis Vuitton purse, or maybe your old Louis Vuitton purse had a uh, had a stain in it. Hey, hey, Jennifer, how are you? Great to have you here. Maybe, maybe uh, you know your kid took crayon and uh, melted wax on the side of one side of your Louis Vuitton purse, and you couldn't get it off. Not that that would ever happen with your kid who's home because they don't have childcare during COVID. Um, and you decide to take that piece and, okay, salvage the other half of the bag and turn it into a bracelet or a uh, watch band or part of a necklace or a luggage tag. So many things. A lighter. Anything. You name it. You, you're creative. You've got a... Um, a bedazzler. Oh, what were you going to say? Sewing machine. A sewing machine. Okay. I use a bedazzler. You might use a sewing machine. Okay. Okay. A bedazzler and a sewing machine. And you turn it into this luggage tag or a watch band or um, any number of things. You took, took that other half of that purse. Okay. That is okay. That is actually okay. You personally taking your piece of your item that you own, doing that, and retaining ownership of the item. Okay? You're not trying to sell it. You're not trying to hawk it. It, it, is, it is your own artwork with a piece that you own. That's fine. Okay? It is not fine if you take old bags... Okay, or even new bags, doesn't matter the age of the bag, and you cut them up and you sew them into something else and you sell them. Okay, you know, yes, it's artistic and it's really cool to make a bracelet or a watch band or a luggage tag or any number of things, and they look really awesome with an old Chanel or a Louis Vuitton um, purse. But the line crosses when you go to sell it, okay? And you're trying to sell those items, okay? You're not selling them as an art-inspired piece. If the inspectors from Louis Vuitton walked in your store and said, hey, I'd like one of those uh, Louis Vuitton luggage tags, you'd say, come on, right over here. They're right here, okay? You wouldn't say, we don't have anything like that. We have luggage tags that were made out of old. That's not what you as a salesperson would say. That's not what a common person would say. Those things are illegal to sell. Okay? It is brand infringement. It is not kosher. It is not good. And you will typically find out how bad it really is. This is how you'll find out. Is One morning, you'll wake up and you'll realize that your Facebook page is no longer there. Your Shopify website is no longer there. Your Instagram page, gone. Okay, gone. Okay, all of it gone. And by the time you get to the store, you'll find all sorts of legal paperwork waiting for you. Okay. It is not cheap, it is not easy, and all the national, all your goodwill is out in the window with these things. You don't own Facebook. You don't own Instagram. 
you don't own the rights to sell something as Louis Vuitton that Louis Vuitton didn't make. Okay, any more than you own the right to give out fake 20s. Okay, and, and these are beautiful pieces. Some of them made with vintage pieces. They're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. You just can't sell them. Okay, if you took it and did it with your own stuff, fine. Kept for your own thing. Totally different story, but that's not what's happening. And yes, there's people out there doing it. And yes, it wouldn't take much to find a whole bunch of them on any number of websites. But don't tarnish your name and all the good work your store has done. Don't wake up with your store online presence, especially during a pandemic, shut down. Don't do it. It is not worth it, okay? The little bit of money you'll make from it is not worth it. Any more than it would be worth it for me to sell a used car seat, okay, which is illegal under the law, you know, because you don't know if it's been in an accident. And I'm not trusting somebody that wants to make a buck off of it. Yeah, and, and I get it. There's some uh, amazing boutiques selling it. I mean, but that doesn't make it legal. Okay, saying they did, they're doing it doesn't make it legal. And I know you get it now, Vicki, and I, and I made you, with your permission, the poster child for this. But uh, it, it, it doesn't make it right. And, and these places, right, I mean, they do it, but it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it legal, you know? And, and some of them, Julie, are absolutely stunning. Absolutely. That, that is, Vicky, that is what makes you the queen. Be known for being the, the real deal, okay? And, and own being the real deal, okay? It isn't worth it, okay? Somebody embellish, even in, you know, the other, the other side is taking an authentic bag and adding embellishments to it. Some people do that. Um, and, and Vicky actually had one. Um, where they add embellishments to it. I think this was some fringe or something that they added to it. Uh, you know, that doesn't, that is also not right. Because again, people think they're buying an authentic Louis or an authentic Chanel or an authentic whatever. And it's not. Okay, even if the original material was. You know? And they're so wrong. They sell so many, and they're so and they're so wrong. Julie doesn't make it right. And eventually they'll get theirs. Okay, doing the right thing, regardless of who is watching. You know, you got to know it in here. And if you can sleep with yourself doing the wrong thing, that's okay. That's on you. And I'm not gonna get any. I'm not here to be on a stump. Although I am here to help your your everyone's understanding of it along. Okay, I'm here to help educate and understand, and, and you don't have to agree with everything I say, okay, and, um, but being known as the place for 100% authentic is, is far, far more important in my book and will serve you better in the long run. You know, I'm always, I always talk about how I play a long game, I, you know, I'll, I'll still say that when I'm, if, if I make it to my 80s, okay, I'll still say I'm playing a long game, okay, even though I won't have that much long left on that, okay. Uh, Rebecca will be, you know, dropping me off at the home and, you know, asking where she gets the check. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm always in it for the long game. This is not short-term stuff. Uh, Yeah, that would, Kristen, yes, that would. Back to our first topic, yes. Okay, you know, you know, it, it, it's part of this whole household. That's, that's part of the whole reason that besides a housing crisis that's about to happen potentially with evictions, okay, people are concerned about people crowding into homes, okay, extended families living in small houses, okay, you know, so more and more people moving in together um, and, and living together. There was one workplace uh, in Massachusetts, so it was in Massachusetts, that um, the workers 
carpooled together. And that's why everybody in the carpool got it. Okay? So everybody in the carpool got it. Uh, because they carpooled together. Okay? So, you know, and the company has been discouraging carpooling uh, since the pandemic because of that. Okay? But the economics of it is another story. Um, but the, you know, it was a good size carpool. You know, you can't stop people from carpooling. You can discourage them, but... You know, that was the thing with it. So, but that is, that is, um, you know, my two big topics for tonight, okay? You know, it's a relatively low bar on collecting on the family first coronavirus uh, act family leave. Um, You know, it is, it is important to, uh, you know, if they qualify, they qualify. And I will have, actually, I got to add that. I do have a small form that they can attest to it uh, with that. I will add that. It's just a quick thing, okay, that they're certifying what reason it is that they're doing it. Ah. Uh, from the gal with the altered Louis Vuitton. It's a gray area, but this is a local Atlanta company that buys authentic vintage designer bags and retools them. And there are a handful of physical retail stores selling their product, including on Roswell Road, where I bought it. Obviously, the brand does not like it, given they believe it takes away from their business. They may have, but illegal is somewhat extreme. Illegal is real. Okay, illegal is real. It's not a real Louis Vuitton. Okay, that's that's the bottom line, and everyone will think it is, um, and it's not. So, uh, oh, there's so many scenarios, and as of right now, that that employment uh, coverage expires at the end of the year, subject to the whims of Congress. So we'll see what happens with that. Again, you know, Congress is really trying to keep people from living in large, you know, extra large groups. That's why. Um, the eviction moratoriums and such, um, but uh, we'll 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 see where things go. We'll see where things go uh, with that. You know this video and everything that I talk about here, everything, everything goes over to narts.org/resalestrong by noon the next day. Narts.org/resalestrong by noon the next day. This video goes there. Um, they're all there, easily accessed uh, on the YouTube channel with the link right there. The YouTube channel, you're not alone running this store, where all the videos are there in order right from the beginning. And you can like, comment, and subscribe, and click the bell to know when another one drops. But they drop by noon the next day, I'm telling you. And all the resources are there. Every file that I talk about, everything that we post is over there by noon the next day. Thank you, Adele and Cassandra, for making that happen. It's also there so you can share it with everybody that you know that's got any kind of legitimate business. (laughs) Every kind of business. uh, We want to get everybody from the ice cream shop to the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. We're getting everybody across to the other side of this. Shoot, by the time we're done, we're going to help Congress get to the other side of this, people. Uh, I am here, uh, I am here every night live in the Nards, uh, uh, private Facebook group. Hey, Kelly, thank you for voting tonight. That's awesome. Uh, I'll be on quick tomorrow night. I don't want to skip a night just for that. I'll be on quick so you guys can get to the muted debate. Um, Uh, That is my plan anyways. We'll see how my day goes. Uh, I am here live every night at more 8 than ish Eastern in the Narts private Facebook group. That is where you catch me live, live and in person. If you have a question in between, you just email me. You email me at neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com. We start this program every night. Every night we start... With the Good Morning, Good Night book. If you were not here at the top of the program, tonight we are on page 120. Good morning. The first school dance in the gym is hella scary, but good music is playing. And your friends are here. So F it, let's dance.
I got the boogie. Our good night tonight is good night. The first school dance in the gym is hella scary. It's dark in here. But the music is loud and we'll never be this young again. So let's dance. Woo! I should have worn my John Travolta outfit, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party, a dance party even, a wedding, a bar mitzvah. We will party again, and I will. I will be there with you to party. Yes, I will. There's no mute button here, people. No mute button. I'll be back here again tomorrow night at more 8 than ish. But until then, know that you and you. And most especially you, brave Vicky, for coming on and letting me call you out. You're not alone running this store. I'll see you tomorrow night, everybody. Have a great night. <laughs>